another tutorial guys and in this one we're diving deep into the tone curves so the red green and blue channels why we move them and how do we get the exact tones we want especially in the skin tones so we're going to be talking about that throughout the edit and if we just get over it i'll show you guys his instagram so he sent this image into me and if we just come down i'll show you guys the image we'll be working with this one right here so we've got the exact same photo and trying to recreate the exact same edit you guys can go follow him down in the description i'll also put a link to his youtube so if we just click there you guys can come over here and just check out some of his work he's actually got really awesome work so i'll put a link to that down in the description as well and he also uh sells his presets so if we're back on his instagram um you can see he's got really really strong orange and teal colors so as you can see really warm rich skin tones and then those teals really pop out of the image as well and if you guys want to get his presets i'll be linking them down in the description as well so if you guys just go to his youtube otherwise and he has them down in the description um download my presets so you guys can come over here check them out for yourself lots of before and afters this really nice orange and teal style and yeah i'll be linking them down below this video as well and if we just go back to his instagram so as you can see obviously orange and teal tones and then there's a decent fade in those blacks a bit of a fade to those whites um and a good amount of grain that looks very rough giving a very rust um vintage look to his shots and yeah let's just get into lightroom um, he shoots very much on the Sigma 35. If I just get up the shot we'll be working with, I've got the settings for this one just here. So this was taken at 35 millimeters on the Sigma Art, ISO 250, f 1.4, and a very high shutter speed of 1 over 4000 to expose the image correctly. So yeah, let's get into this, see what we can do. Here's the raw unedited image that he has sent me and then a screenshot from his Instagram. So firstly, I just want to show you guys the cropping. So as you can see, 4x5, we've cropped in there to make it uh, for Instagram. Let's go back to where we were. Okay, so I actually tried for a long time to achieve this edit. And I really want to dive deep into the curves for this tutorial. So if I come over here, this is my... Um, first go at trying to replicate this edit and i'm very close to it i am pretty happy with it it looks pretty darn similar over here but there was something that was really annoying me because this style really depends on getting those really rich nice orange skin tones so if i just zoom in here um you can see that the one thing that was annoying me was uh, you can see over in his images, we have these real deep oranges over here in the shaded parts of her skin tone. So, especially like down here in the neck, you can see it. There's a bit of a redness or rich orange in that transition area of bright skin tones to dark skin tones. So you might think, I just have to bring up the saturation of those red tones there. But you just... I just can't get those tones in those shadow areas because they're actually put in there with the curves but as i said this was my first attempt at it got really close but just wasn't happy with the skin tones so i i realized i'm just gonna have to do this edit completely all over again and actually do an s curve in it and that's what we're going to do today but i'm just explaining why i couldn't get this edit perfect without using the, the curves. I could get it really close, but just couldn't quite get there all the way. So um, I'll explain again while we're going through it with the other image, just why I need an S curve in here. I'll try to do it really quickly now, but I'll probably have to explain it a few times because it's quite advanced sort of editing um, techniques. So as you can see, we need to add in redness into these shadowy area, this transition zone into dark skin tones and those colors those red colors aren't actually in the original image so hue hue and saturation and luminance isn't going to help you because those colors they're just not there we've got to put them into the image so that's when you're gonna have to add in some red 
into the midtones. But as you can see, it's made the whole image red. We only want it in the midtones. So you'd do something like that. Now this is an extreme example, but now you can see we've got heaps of reds in that transition zone of bright skin tones to dark. Like it's over the top at the moment, but you can see how we're extra saturated in those little, in those areas of the skin tone. So this is just explaining to you guys how the tone curves work. So if I just do something like that, you can see we're really putting in that redness, that little spot that I was trying so hard to get those rich skin tones with. And then see if I bring it right up you can see what it's really doing so that's the idea I'm gonna go through it in the next well our other image this was my first attempt this edit I'm gonna go through it with my second attempt and we're gonna do a curve a realistic curve this one's over the top at the moment that balances out and we actually get the correct tones throughout the entire image but remember this is a really key thing and when I learnt this it changed everything in terms of my editing and especially the curves, I really really understood the curves once I knew how to do this. So that transition zone of the bright skin tones over to the dark skin tones, there's a really rich red in there. So I've explained it over here, it's over the top at the moment, exaggerated example but that's what's going on. We've got lots of reds in that transition zone with the curves here. And you can't do that with the HSL because those colors just aren't in the original image. Okay, so we'll just go back. Let's get rid of my first attempt. You can see we're like too orange and green and all that in the shadows there. So I'm scrapping that one. I started over again and I'm going to try to do this edit but including the curves because now I know what I need to do. Okay, let's carry on. Let's drop the exposure a bit. Um, I'm going to drop the contrast because when I do those curves, they're going to add in a lot of contrast into the image as well. So I'll quickly, really quickly explain that. Hopefully you guys can see, I just real quickly um, drop the reds here. It actually makes the whole image darker as well as pulling out the reds. So I just pulled out the reds and that's why we've got a greeny blue now because you've actually taken the reds out and it will actually make your image darker as well so and therefore I'll do an S curve that will add in contrast I'll go over that again soon um, shadows so shadows I'm thinking like areas up here um, back here uh, her neck here you can see in our one we can see that a lot better you can see it's darker in her one so by quite a bit so I'm going to bring down the shadows there um, whites I'm going to bring up quite a bit there's quite a punch to the brightest areas so I'm going to bring them up and then we're pretty darn close So clarity, I'll bring down a touch. Vibrance. We we have um, a very vibrant style to this one. Okay, we're just about onto curves now. So what I'll do is do the S curve, give the favor to the reds and the mid and the skin tones. And then we're going to have too much contrast and then we're going to do the fade with the, this with this curve. So I'll do, I'll do all the curves now and then I'll go over it and explain my reasoning with them.
Okay, so that's the curves done, and I'll just quickly go over them. We're, we're way too saturated, so actually, just before I go over them, I'll just roughly do our saturation correctly, because then it might be a bit easier to explain. Um, okay, so now, since we're roughly correct, let's explain the curves now. So... Um, I'll go over this one first. So this one's to get that fade in the black. See, see how dark these blacks are and how much of a fade there it is to them. And a fade can quite often give that MAC look. A lot of people go, how do you achieve the MAC look? Sometimes a, a fade, especially in the highlights, can really help to do that. So as you can see, we've got quite um, a reasonably harsh S-curve. And that's going to give lots of contrast. So... Um, we're gonna have to bring up the blacks a lot and um, bring keep the whites down quite a bit to counteract that contrast so if I just get rid of this curve you can see how we've got lots of contrast now and that's because of all these other curves that I've added in not only colors so like we've put reds in the midtones and brought reds out of the shadows there for example but but of reds in the highlights there um, so that's what we've done, but it also adds in contrast. So if, watch what happens if I um, turn off all the curves, less con contrast. So we've added in more contrast. Um, we've added in some colors into the midtones, and now we want the fade because the other curves don't do the fade. They're doing the colors and the contrast. But this curve, we're pretty much all we're just thinking about the fade. And the fade in the blacks and the fade in the whites it's all we're thinking for this curve not colors so as you can see bringing up the blacks and the shadows here gives the fade down in these areas so if i just delete these or just you see how dark it gets down there now reset go back to where we were okay so now we're much similar so when I do things like this, I want to. I look for like detail. I go, how much of that carpet or chair down there can I see? Because if you bring it up lots, it actually disappears. And I just try to match it up. So, um, okay. And I am looking also sometimes look at the histogram. I, I normally just do it by eye, but. Uh, you can look at the histogram so up here so if we go to his image this is his image a screenshot of his ins Instagram and it's giving us a histogram of the how bright his blacks are and how bright his whites are so you can see that this all this here is telling me where the blacks are and they are a good distance from true black over here this is when the blacks hit black black and this is a bit of a fade so this is how much fade is in those blacks is this gap here well that's how i think of it and then if we go back to our edit if we just delete this see see how blacks are true black now and that's why they're so dark here and his aren't so dark so if i just put that fade back in now we have that same gap that he had in over in his image and it's the same with the whites over this side so this this shows the whites and if I just bring this up you can see now it's touching the end and those whites are tr white white like you're losing detail in them they're the max brightness they can go before your just whole image goes white so by bringing that down you bring it down a bit and if we just go back to his image so again this is his screenshot and it's telling us his histogram you can see those whites don't quite get to the end so there's a fade to those whites in the image or his image is just underexposed but in, it's not that in this case in this case we're adding a fade to those whites so now our histogram looks reasonably similar to his same distance fade in those blacks fade in those blacks um, and then those whites those whites see if I get rid of the curve those whites go to the end don't want that we want a flat and then if I say if I flatten this drop the whites 
you kind of get the same effect but it's um as you can see it's a gradual drop off so we want we want that drop in the highlights there for the fade and that's how you do it bring down that white point there okay and that's good um, as you can see we added a little bit to the midtones there that's just to match up the same brightness like um, so yeah we've got a bit of a pop and brightness and richness those midtones that's why in each of these channels is a bit of a bit extra okay so now I'll go on and explain these guys now, the red, green, and blue channels. We're done with explaining this one. This one's nothing, well, I don't think about colors when I'm moving this one. I'm thinking about fade and the whites, um, blacks, and how much of a pop there is to the highlights and midtones. And then like this area is like how gradual, how gradual you see the fall off to those shadows and how soft those shadows are. So. If you see if I lift this, you can see how like, yeah, you kind of lose too much contrast. But if you like have this too far down, you'll see how it gets quite muddy and like, uh, the, the, it's not a, it's not a smooth fade. Like, doesn't come out of that fade nice and smooth. So that's what you want to think about when you're moving this one here. Is that transition area pop there, and then just as you can see the skin tones how shiny they are there okay onto the red green and blue channel why i shifted them how i did so as i explained before the key is getting those rich skin tones and to do that we needed to get these red the reds in this transition area from bright skin tones to dark skin tones so if you just watch what happens in these curves you can see there's a lift to the red and the mid tones there's a little bit of a less lift to the green in the mid-tones and there's even less with the blues so as you can see we've mostly got red in the mid-tones we lifted it out the further that's giving a favor to the skin tones there and that's why the red is shining through there and um, the shadows Um, so again you can see how the reds come up like this is this this spot right here is probably where that shade is so right there is sort of where that shade is and you can see the you can see the greens dip down a little further than the reds and that just spot there and you can see that's that means the reds going to be coming through that much sooner and that's how you right there right there you get those nice rich um red skin tones so watch what happens if i pull them out you see you lose that nice color that really adds the richness into the edits and this is this is why so many people just can't recreate the really popular styles like sam calder for example he has really red skin tones so here's like quite orange skin tones in the brighter areas and when it's transitioning into the darker skin tones they go very very red and like almost purple so that's how he does it. i've got a tutorial on um how to get a red and teal style but you got to be working with these with these sliders to just push in the right amount of color in the right shade for those skin tones so hopefully you guys get that and then there's just a bit of bit put in the um in the highlights there so that's just going to give extra color because you're lifting it up in each of them red green and blue and a little less in the blue so blue if i add in blue it's going to really cool it off but um let's try to go back so the blue is pulled out a little more than all of them see how we get this nice yellow now if we pull it it's like over exaggerated but if we pull blue out that's the color we want and and i think that is sort of helps get this really rich orange look by leaving in some warmth 
um, greens. Uh, yeah, and I think we're good. Like, we've created a really rich tone in the skin tones there. It's, o it's oversaturated compared to his image, but that's what I'm thinking in the S curve. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Um, let me just maybe explain a few things again because it's just really important. Um, yeah, so if I just pull out the greens, you can see we're adding more purple into the image. Purple is the opposite of green, so if I'm pulling green out, I'm pretty much put, putting purple in. You can kind of think of it like that. Works just the same as up here. So if I pull blue, if I pull blue out of the image, I'm pretty much putting a yellow in. If I'm putting a purple in, I'm putting less green in. You can think of it like that. And then it's the same with the curves, like you just don't have a red slider up here, but you do kinda in the curves here. It's called the, yeah, this, you don't have a red, a red slider up here. But if you did, it would be red one side and then a cyan, I think the opposite of red is a cyan, this like greeny, greeny blue. So, yeah. All right, we'll move on. I might briefly go over that again, but that's what I think, and I hope you guys understand that. Um, yeah, I'll flash up on screen an example of other people using, getting those rich tones in the um, transition of skin, over, transition of shadow of the skin to get those rich colors in the skin tones. Okay. Let's move on. Let's maybe do some split toning. So I sort of want to add some blues into the image, I think. Um, uh, we look a little, we look a little uh, hot in the shadows or like purple. I could try to do it in curves, but I like what I've done in curves now. So I'm just going to add in some blues into the shadow, some teals. And then um, I think in the highlights, we kind of look too green now. Um, and I'm also thinking about skin tones. We, we haven't done our hues yet. I could try to just do the hues to match up our skin tones. Um, at the moment, I think the whole image just looks a bit too green, especially in the highlights. So, and the skin tones are mainly in the highlights. So I'm just gonna add like a deep blue, almost a purple in there and then if I just shift this see see how we just look a little too green throughout the image and um, to balance that out I'm going this way because that's a purple and purples the opposite of green so watch what happens you don't actually get more purple, you just get less green. If that makes sense, that's how I think of it. And yeah, now we just look less green. Um, right. And then balance. I like to play with balance a bit. I just shift it one way or the other. And then like, if you've got a trained eye, you'll, you'll be like, oh, that looks a little bit better. So... I think slight bit more purple in the whole image. So that's adding highlights to the entire image at 100. That's adding your shadows color 100 to the whole image. I'll just go about there. Right, let's move on. Let's, um, we could quickly do our grain and stuff now. So we obviously have lots of grain. Um, let's lift it up. It's obviously very, um, very large and has a lot of roughness to it. Here's almost quite a vintage look to his style. So we'll just bring up the size a lot. Roughness. 
Okay. Right. And he shot this at 1.4, as you can see up there, and sort of like cropped it quite a bit. So I think we should do quite a bit of sharpening to the shot. And yeah, let's try to fine tune all our colors now. So we look pretty darn close. Like we've got um, some nice blues back here. You can tell when he shot this image that he positioned her. Like if you look at the original image, hit reset. He knew that this those skin tones were gonna complement those blue walls really well. So he sort of thought about this beforehand, the colors and how they would show out really nicely because skin tone is the opposite of um, aqua or blue or teal um, okay oranges I think we look a little yellow let's make them a little more red and then lips for example look um, our ones look quite red I think over in his they look reasonably orange let's go this direction a little bit We look good so if we just play with the yellows you can see that's really affecting your hair I might just go this direction a wee bit because if we go this way sort of everything looks too too rich like you want you want to have you want the colors to change throughout the skin tone if that makes sense it's kind of complicated to explain um, but like if you just got one color to the oranges and the reds it just doesn't look right because your lips are the same color as um, the oranges uh, so you want color contrast between each of these colors it's kind of hard to explain I might think of a better way to explaining that in another tutorial um, no real greens in this image but he does keep a reasonably well for how warm his yellows are he does keep a pretty natural looking green okay so this is going to affect the wall and as you can see this way is green pretty much or like a teal and then we just want slightly deeper aquas that are a bit more of a blue so we'll go quite a wee way that way and then the blues so the blues is going to affect the deeper blues like or the not the aquas so as you can see you can see this also affects the wall so don't get confused thinking you have to shift the blues to achieve this the aquas were affecting that the most so so i'm looking at this area while i'm shifting the blues here not up here because aquas affected that area up there and blues only slightly affect it but I think we're about good there. Okay, let's move to saturation. These reds come down a touch. Aquas, just trying to match them up simply what I'm trying to do blues pretty saturated there about good it's just quite often like to bring magenta and purple down even though there's not much in the image at all like eventually you will take a photo and it will have heaps of purple in it even though usually it doesn't like and then it will throw off your entire edit well if you were to make it into a preset then luminance I might just slightly slightly bring down the oranges slightly richer tones not too much though because we still want a nice shine to the skin let's bring it down sort of darker just darker um, tones to those the aquas you don't want too much of a shine because like again we're sort of thinking about color contrast again like uh, these blues are the 
very like teal and orange a really bright orange in a like in terms of deepness a very bright orange and then like if you get a really deep teal they'll complement each other really well and then you can do that with luminance as well it's hard to, i'm trying to explain it but it's a pretty advanced concept of creating contrast in the photo in terms of luminance so these are opposite colors if you get them um at different so if you get bright oranges they get too saturated if i do that um if you get these really bright and these really deep that's creating contrast again in your image like teal and orange we all know they're opposites and they make make um they create color contrast which is really appealing to the human eye that you can also just take that to the next level by creating it with luminance so we've got nice bright oranges and then you could have quite deep aquas that are opposite and then it's the opposite again bright versus dark now it's hard to explain <laughs> i don't know I'll, I'll try to explain that better another time but that's just an advanced concept and it's just personal preference anyway um right might back off on that a touch and we are about done i'm going to just do some brushes and stuff so to the skin so if we just zoom in a bit maybe click on so i've placed all these for the tutorial already on off this is where this brush is affecting um turn it on we don't need like and if you want to erase an area you've brushed over just click the erase there brush away but what i want to do is just give a bit of an extra glow to the face so what i'm going to do is just bring up the highlights And I just want to be careful about bringing up the whites because um, when we have quite a flat looking image uh, I always like to bring up the highlights more than the whites the whites can come off really harsh and you want like appealing light or nice light is soft light and if I left the whites I think that light wouldn't won't be so soft so you want to kind of want to take the contrast out sometimes to create a softer looking light. So bringing up the highlights and shadows would do that. And then maybe just a touch of whites. Just, just to make her face stand out as it's this focal point of the image. Okay. And yeah. Um, the eye here. So we just want to very slightly brighten the eye and then this one if i just press o you can see where it's affecting it's just affecting the iris of the eye and i just want to bring that out a little as well pretty subtle um i'm not gonna do any sharpening or anything like that but yeah i'm pretty happy with that guys it looks pretty similar and yeah that's that's um the best i can explain the curves at the moment i'll keep doing tutorials and really trying to explain the curves it, that that was a real turning point when i sort of discovered how to get those rich tones and the shadowy skin tones like by messing around with this and then you gotta you can't just bring up the reds and not the greens and not the blues you got to bring them all up a little bit like you got to balance them out otherwise it'll just look a little too much if you just brought up the reds you got to like have a little bit of green in there and the, to make a nice orange so yeah and then the blues the blues out the most because when you don't have blues you have a warm color and that's you can see that up here with the with the tint like um take blues out you're putting warmth in put blues in you're taking warmth out same down here in this curve here so except you're like 
you're not dealing with the entire image you're dealing with shadows midtones highlights and you're adding in contrast like if you do a harsh s, s curve you will add in contrast as well so like if there's all the curves off on off on you can see we've really given a nice vibrant punch by adding more colors into the midtones there and then this curve kind of like softens up that contrast and then gives that nice fade to the entire image the grain plays quite a bit of role to the style so if i just turn the grain on and off and then um yeah sharpening came out quite a bit but that's about it um not too much in the sliders there it was pretty much all the curves uh let's yeah that's about it guys i'll quickly show you that image i i had a first go editing so this is i think this one this was my first go editing and i didn't do the curves and i couldn't get that richness in that bit there and that was i had to do the edit all again i would try i tried like putting warmth in in the shadows to try to get that which kind of works but then you've got heaps of warmth throughout the all of your shadows and i didn't really like that i wanted it just in there so i had to do it with the curves split turning kind of gets you there not quite um i tried controlling that by using this still wasn't overly helpful so yeah anyway you had to use the curves um let's just go back to the one we just did this one right here and yeah um if i just go before hit command z that will undo that and there's an after guys so yeah i'll leave it there guys